What's up guys? There are lots of gun bunnies in the world, but only one chocolate gun bunny, and that's yours truly, Zinga Harris. I promise you more gun tourery things, more shooting, less talking, uh, if you will, and today's the day. So I'm currently getting dressed, getting all of my equipment together, my guns, my ammo, all of that jazz, because I'm doing some AK training today. This is my first ever class of that kind. If you remember, and if you go back to my channel, um, you'll see that the whole point of starting this channel was to kind of go on a journey of badassery, learning how to use guns, knives, protect myself, uh, my friends, and my family. Um, and part of that is using my AK-47. I have an M70 Yugo. I'm going to be using that today. I'm, I'm taking my Walther PDP with me. I um, don't even know if I'll shoot that, but it's going to be on my hip anyway, because why not? And um, it's it's the A crack of dawn, but it's worth it. All right, let's get into it. Quick pit stop at Brugger's Bagels. Brugger's Bagels for coffee and bagels. All right, Scotty, you've taken some of uh, Monty's courses before. Several. Several of his courses. Um, what do you think I'm going to get out of this, especially this being my first time taking a course like this? Well, he's um, he's extremely good at imparting information. So, you know, there's a lot of people out there who can teach firearms stuff. Yeah. I do a passingly good job at it. He's one of those rare people who you can give him an eight-year-old kid who's scared of guns or, you know, a 55-year-old woman who used to be anti-gun and, and he can take those people from nothing to something in eight hours and very consistently. Mm. So, it, you know, regardless of what your skill level's at or whatever it is you're trying to learn, one thing I love about this guy is you can take the same class multiple times and you're still progressing very rapidly. Okay. So you'll learn a lot today. <clears throat> nice. Um, I guess I'm doing like a intermediate, or not, kind of like a beginner to AK class. There's some things that I know just from watching videos and handling the AK itself. Um, but he's probably just going to make me more proficient at those things. And um, <clears throat> I don't know, because I've never taken a class like this. I don't know exactly what to expect. I'm, I expect to do a lot of repetition. Well, you know, he has like structured classes that he does through his company. But I think because he's kind of doing this as a gift to us specifically, and there's not going to be any other clients, he'll probably be a little bit more flexible with the format. So. You know, you might be into obviously some like intro to carbine type stuff, mm -hmm. but he might also get cute and make you do other things. So we'll see. We'll see. On the road again, Scotty and Z, Z and Scotty, again, together on the road once more. Another time. Oh God, stop. One thing you never want to do is present to the target and then actuate your safety. Because you're, you're effectively late at that point. Everything we're doing is defensive training here. So if you have to present the weapon and use deadly force, you want to make sure that really essentially that safety is coming off pretty immediately in that presentation. Fire. So you did everything the way Monty asked you to do, and yet you aimed here, and yet you struck here. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Mm -hmm. Think back to the discussion we had back at the uh, oh. Jeep. Or look because at your, of the zero? Well, look at your rifle. Where's the barrel? Where's the sight? Ah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So let's take your rifle right now and just kind of put it right here. See? Mm -hmm. So your sights are on, right? But the shot is striking low. And that's because of that, that three inch or so offset you have. Uh, we call that height over bore. Right. So if you're at close range like this and you want to be even more accurate, okay? Then what you have to do is, in this case, you have to hold over the target. And when you're a beginning shooter, what we want you to do is to become familiar with the ballistics of your system. So you know that, hey, when I'm close to the target, I've got this hold of, so if I have to place an accurate shot 
with maximum accuracy that matters, I know that I can hold over and achieve that. And then you, you begin to know it more intimately. Mysteriously, as I get closer and closer back, I can move back and shoot, move back and shoot, and get closer to that 36 yards. All of a sudden, that little holdover distance gets less and less and less until I get to 36 yards. And then when I aim at the two, I strike the two. All right, one shot on spot number two, threat. Don't forget to leave your finger on the trigger while you, while you scan and assess that target. You're scanning and assessing that primary threat. And if you're happy with the results, then you can go to a ready position and put it on safe. Good. Now don't go down to here, go right back to low ready. Always working. All right, each time I call threat, you'll fire on spot number two. Threat. one of the things I call bread and butter training. There are so many advanced manipulations and cool stuff that you're going to learn and get to do, but at the end of the day when it comes to defensive firearms use, there is one thing above all other things that you have to be able to do well, and that is to basically, you know, develop a stance and present to an accurate shot. 6 and 11 threat. Okay, so when we're scanning and assessing and assessing our work, what, what, can, what, what is happening in this assessment? Make sure the foot is down. Right, or that you accomplished your work. Right. Now, accomplishing your work can be many things. It could be stopping a threat in real life. It could also be getting hits on the target you were asked to hit. So you have a, a you, you hit outside the 11. So if you ever, if you ever see, perceive that you didn't get your hit, automatically re-engage okay. to make sure you accomplish your work. All right, so, all right, six and 11, correct. Nicely done. Make sure you engage, disengage that safety right away. <laughs> once, once the threat call goes out, what that's simulating is, oh, I've got a real threat. Okay. And, and now you, you, know, you want to disengage that safety and get on. All right. We're going to do 15, 7, and 14. You should be at low ready. Threat. difference yeah this is the fatigue but also when I was shooting at this one for some reason I was going like this okay and like I was like and that's not a huge deal. seal team six <laughs> that's not a huge deal uh, but uh but yes this is a heavy a heavy rifle and again it's heavy because it's a century arms AK and it's milled from a solid billet of steel so that makes for a heavier rifle there are some benefits to a solid steel billet lower but um, but it is going to be a lot heavier, and that was one of the reasons. And even even the light does add weight to it. But I mean, personally, I'm a big fan of lights on a defensive weapon because essentially you have you're obligated to identify your target. And there's some other advantages too. So for a home defense situation or you know urban defense, lights are a good thing on the weapon. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are there are times and places where they're not desirable, but this is not one of them. If I were your daughter or wife, and I brought this home, would you tell them to sell it and get uh, something lighter? Um, I would, and and here's why. Um, you are a small a small woman, right? And it's a it's a heavy gun. So can you operate it? Yes. Can you operate it optimally? You wouldn't be able to operate it as optimally as you would a lighter mm -hmm. weapon. Now there is such a thing as too light, right? Mm -hmm. when, when, a, when a rifle system has a lot of weight, it also absorbs a lot of recoil. And you can, you can get them so light that 
you know, it becomes less effective, but you're looking for what's right for you, mm -hmm. right? You want your porridge to be just right. So essentially, um, it, this is a good example of, of a lighter gun because it's a shorter barrel system. It's a 10 inch barrel. And basically uh, an AR-15 is already sort of light by design, as long as you don't put too many things on right. this. So, uh, you know, I was just giving you a comparison because I'm watching you. We just came back from lunch and um, you know, I'm seeing, I can see when, if you get fatigued. I mean, it's just apparent to me visually. And so, yes, the answer is yes. I, I would say a lighter system would, would serve you better. Okay. Thanks so much for watching this video. I wanted to interject something really, really quickly. Um, I learned a lot last weekend. Uh, for me now, it's, it's last weekend um, when I was training with Monty Edge from Everyday Ready. Um, one of the things uh, is that what I thought I had and what I thought could work for me ended up not really working for me when I actually trained with the gun. I realized uh, this may not be the gun for me. I like the AK, I think it's a cool gun. Um, what I might end up having to do is is pretty much getting another rifle. Um, but here's the thing, that's not bad news. It wasn't bad news at all. I'd rather know now than know when I have to be in an actual defensive situation. Um, and so holding it all day, I mean, we were there from about nine to about 5, 30, 6 o'clock. And so my, my I mean, I was, I was sore. I would have been sore anyway because I'm out of shape, but um, the AK really, really, I, I got really, really fatigued and it was because of how heavy my um, M70 Yugo is. What I learned from that training is I learned a lot of really good fundamental things that I'm gonna continue working on, but I also learned that the AK may not be the gun for me. So, this channel is all about um, learning. It's all about me on my journey to badassery, as I said in the beginning of this video, and um, it's about uh, you kind of coming with me and, and seeing how I learn and this is one of the biggest milestones for me I've got I've got the philosophy of the Second Amendment down. I know why I know who James Madison yada 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 I can I can debate it I know the stats and um, And all that jazz and good reasons as to why we should keep our Second Amendment, but actually uh, putting it into uh, Action in my life um, is a whole other uh, a story and it's a uh, it's it's a different experience and so um, thank you for joining this journey with me I hope you enjoy the vlog there are more to come and you'll actually get to see me training with the Daniel Defense uh, 556 so uh, stay tuned for that video um, a lot easier to handle um, but anyway thank you so much I'll see you next time